piece of fruit that they enjoy apart from eating coal tar? Uh, fruit and vegetable, rah. Sorry, Ian, if you're listening to us. Um, uh, no, fruit's good for you. And it's even better in the church, in the lives of God's children. Fruitful lives. Have you forgiven me? Um, we've had uh, the season of goodwill. And we've been given and receiving gifts. Now, there are gifts of the Spirit, but there are also fruits of the Spirit. And in a sense, they are gifts too. They're gifts to our character and uh, they're gifts to other people as we uh, take the fragrance of Christ to them. And they're, of course, gifts to the Church of Jesus Christ. Now, our character uh, should grow as we do. Our spiritual health should improve as we draw near to Christ and serve his kingdom. And, you know, we get great enjoyment in watching fruit grow. I don't know how many people have apple trees or plum trees or grow raspberries or strawberries in their garden. But, you know, we watch them grow bigger and then becoming ripe. And then, hopefully, the enjoyment of tasting how uh, fruitful and good for us they have become. And our spiritual health improves too as we draw near, as we, um, as, as we allow this fruit to grow in our lives. Now, fruit in our gardens grows fairly naturally, but spiritual fruit can grow in a supernatural way within us. But the key is we need to be rooted in Christ and in his word. We need to walk the walk and talk the talk of the Christian life. Not just uh, talk the talk, but we need to actually live it out. Now, how many fruits of the Spirit are there? We've done all these sevens in Revelation. We've done all the different numbers, the 12 things. So, no, disappointed in that one. There's nine, that's right, you've got to throw them up there. Three groups of three, there are nine, nine fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, here's your challenge for staying for the year ahead. Which are the two that you would say you're actually best at portraying in your life? Find two that you think you're quite good at, or that you're, you, you don't think you've got a big struggle with. You see these in your life. Now, hopefully everybody can find two. Hopefully everybody can find more than two. But is there a couple that you think, yeah, I'm a really patient person and people know that about me? Um, whatever it is. Which two do you find easiest to show? You know, you tell me, at least this is for you. But I hope you can all find one or two that you think these are less of a struggle for me. Right, now let's do the tougher thing here. Find one or two that you know you need to improve it. Um, you know, confessions, gentleness would be mine. Uh, and, uh, years and years ago when I was young, self-control was one I prayed a lot about and uh, God really helped grow that in me. Um, but I don't know what were you. So one or two that you're going to focus on where you think that's a fruit that needs to grow more in me in this year ahead. And if that's going to um, be your focus for this year, then you need to Keep revisiting this. That's why you've got these lovely postcards with the verse of the year or the verses of the year to be more correct this year. Um, you can take these with you. You can look at them maybe each week as you're having your quiet mornings and you can think about these. And if you conquer the one or two that you find it hardest, and they'll be, you know, it's like you get rid of the bottlenecks, there's new bottlenecks. You find the next two that you need to work on. And uh, there'll be great results. Now, if you've come from another church and you want to take some of these away, there's hundreds of these postcards. Take them away and give them to other people. Because, you see, if the people of God are filled with the fruit of the Spirit, the church will be transformed. Because when we are filled with the fruit of the Spirit, that pleases God greatly. And God loves to give good gifts to his children. Anybody disagree with that? That's what it tells us in 
the Gospels. Now, if we are fruitful, we'll become more effective. And interestingly, Paul lists these fruits of the Spirit after talking about um, all kinds of other uh, uh, characteristics that are uh, less pleasing to God. And uh, he's, he's telling us that we need to live our lives in a holy and committed way to Jesus Christ, not to our own selfishness or the ways of the world. And we do that um, in a sense we're given the opportunity to grab the blessings instead of allowing lives to be corrupted. Isn't that a positive thing as we go into the new year? Instead of getting dragged down with worldly things, we're going to be fruitful, joy-filled, loving, forbearing, kind, all these other wonderful things that will make positive uh, results in other people's lives. So I don't know if anybody's doing New Year resolutions or whether you're not, but why not make this year-long commitment to God which involves desiring to be more fruit-filled in at least one or two of these nine fruits of the Spirit. Remember that although I'm suggesting one or two, all nine are very important. You see, they will add a deep vibrancy and a richness to your personal character and in your faith and in your walk with the Lord. Do you know the Lord wants you and you and you, every one of you, to become his masterpiece? Imagine these wonderful paintings that are described as masterpieces. Uh, the Monies, the Picassos, I don't know what ones you like the best. But in Romans 8 and 29, that's what um, Paul tells us. From the very beginning, God decided that those who follow him should be like his son. That's why we sung, show us Christ. Because the more we see him, the more we will want to become Christ-like. I don't know about you. I've got some way to go. There's a, a lot of watering and um, maybe some fertilizer needed, especially in gentleness, maybe, and some other things too. Um, but there is no better time to tackle this than here, right at the beginning of a new year. Make that your goal this year. Never mind the things about, uh, that you would normally make that are about yourself, if you're losing weight or all of these things. I'm not saying don't do them. This is your spiritual health, not just your physical well-being. Anytime you want more of these, there's hundreds of them printed. You can come back and get more of them. You can put one in your fridge. You can put one as a bookmarker in the books you're reading or whatever. Um, you can send them to people as an actual postcard to encourage them, but use this as a focus for how God's going to uh, transform you and his church in the year ahead. Maybe when you come to church, maybe you'll bring a notebook or you'll do it on your electronic device. Take a journal of the themes and the things that God speaks to you throughout this year. No, a good father loves to give good gifts. It's up to us to record them, to remember them, to go home and pray about them, to come back encouraged or to come and encourage others about the things that God's speaking into our lives. My prayer that we'll watch God making us more fruitful precisely because we are working this faith in him with his help in the fellowship of his people on the day of rest for the building of his kingdom. Amen. We've been thinking a lot about God's word speaking to 